Trees Collaborate is a group made up of different climate action groups from all over Oxfordshire who meet on a monthly basis online to discuss um, and share ideas with a view to doubling tree cover in Oxfordshire and enhancing biodiversity. This group, Trees Collaborate, um, um, have all sent me, have sent me sample materials from different trees around the county. Trees that have got some kind of importance, some significance to them, to them or have a story behind them. And today I'm going to open, we've had two envelopes, one from Sustainable Woodstock and one from Banbury Trees and we're going to open and find out what plant material we've got. It's exciting. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, it smells nice. And here we go with the second one. Collected from Moorfield Park in Banbury, OX16. Um, from Banbury Trees, lots of trees for the future. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that. Oh, oh. Sample of willow. Pat Willow collected at Charbury Canoe Club. This, I believe, yeah, it's from Chicken Norton. So, Sustainable Community Farm, Willow. Elder. All right. A sample of leaves and flowers from a hawthorn tree, old specimen. The tree is on the Swinbrook Estate near Burford in a beautiful spot overlooking the Rubber River Windrush between Swinbrook and Astor. It's from the Radley Oak, an old oak in Radley College grounds, but visible from the public footpath. Its girth is 8.5 metres. The Radley Oak has a huge branch reaching down to the ground and becoming another tree. We've chosen this oak because it's wonderful in itself, but also as it represents the importance of oaks to Radley. This is from Woodstock. They did a community woodland and um, uh, all of a sudden, at one point, a Christmas tree just appeared. Someone had, like, gorilla planted or planted this, this Christmas tree. And they thought, oh, well, you know, fair enough. You know, there was space for it. And they left it. But then every year, it gets decorated. And then on the twelfth night, all the decorations disappear every year and it's become this tradition now that they've got their Christmas tree in the woodland. For the Watlington um, component of this, this, um, this piece, um, I, foraged, um, I foraged from a hawthorn bush up on the road to the old station which just walks up to the Ickneald Way. Um, I think I thought it was important for it to be hedge material, because that's what you know, we've been working on in Watlington, is the hedgerow project. Up on the hills, there's evidence really of ancient hedges, the species that would have been in ancient hedges. Um, whereas down here in the lowlands, um, they're predominantly hawthorn um, hedges, which are typical enclosure, um, enclosure hedges. So dating back from the mid, um, 1800s. If possible, I'd use branches that have already fallen off, you know, so I'm not, I'm, yeah, so I'm gathering it ethically. So I think the general rule is to take only 10% of a plant um, I'm, so I'm foraging the plants um, and then I'm extracting the colour by, just by boiling it up. Just simple, with water, boiling out, extracting the colour. Right, I'm just separating out here the hawthorn leaves from the berries. And I'm just going to cover them. Turn this off and I 
we're going to mix up some aluminium sulfate, alum, um, which in fact is a pickling spice. It's really not toxic. Um, the only reason I'm wearing a mask is because of the fine particles. And the metal particles in the aluminium attach themselves to the colour particles. And then I add washing soda, or you can add soda ash, wood ash, um, but that separates the water away from those coloured uh, metal particles. Okay. Right now, I'm going to test the pH level. See what we get. Yeah, I'm up at a five. That is now separating them. So that's what you'll be left with, the clear water on top and the pigment particles underneath. Take off that first layer of water. So now I'm going to filter it. Right, so it's running clear. So now I'm just going to open that up. And that will then dry to pigment. It takes, um, well, overnight. Um, I'll leave it overnight, depending how much of it there is. But um, yeah, it dries out overnight, maybe a little bit longer if there's a lot. Oh. Um, you grind it up, um, either using a pestle and mortar or just the muller itself, or I use an a, um, antique iron. Uh, it's a good gun crushes. So this is the hawthorn leaves from Watlington. So right, we're gonna take the pigment that we've made and make it into a watercolour. We're gonna start with gum arabic and I mix that first. So and put a teaspoon in. And then I'm going to add, it's just tepid water. Just a little bit of tepid water. Um, I'll be mixing up the pigment with the gum arabic, a little bit of honey, and a bit of glycerine. Uh, we've got some glycerine. Uh, and it's just, just to prevent the watercolour pans from cracking out. Just give some moisture to it. And then I'm going to need some deionised de water. Right. Cool. A little glycerine, well, my honey, my water, and my gum arabic. Right, so I'll take a bit off. Right, so I'm going to add in a bit of gum arabic, one drop of honey and glycerin, and a bit of water. When I've got a nice paste, um, which would be the basis, if I let dry, would be a watercolour pan, like you find in all the watercolour sets, it's the same. Um, and then I add that into a, it's an emulsion type mix. Into a different household paint. But this particular paint um, is lime based. It's a artisanal, lime-based paint, which has been mixed with graphene, which is a 21st century technology. Over the 30-day curing process, 
it absorbs CO2, so it sequesters carbon. The thing I like is you'll, you, you'll put a plant into a pot and you haven't got a clue what colour is going to come out. The, um, it's really exciting. Like spindle, that's one of my favourites. When you make it into a, a pigment, and mix it with the alum and the soda rash, um, it gives off a mustard yellow. It's um, really, really bright and vibrant. It's lovely. But then you've got ivy. Um, that can give off a blue, um, it can give off a green. Um, and then you've got like dogwood, dogwood in the spring. It can give off a purple or it can give off a green. You know, with hedgerows, um, I'm finding, um, yeah, in the spring I'm finding lovely, lovely greens, like sap greens and really bright greens. Um, so they do change seasonally. I'm getting a lot more, um, you know, or orangey reds, browns in the autumn. And you'll get the, you know, you'll get pinks and blues and purples and greens and yellows. Um, so you'll get a whole spectrum of colours um, just from a hedge. By collecting pigments from different parts in the county, um, it gives this colourful picture. Got these um, local community groups on the ground doing really important work. Um, and it's just about being able to share um, knowledge and resources um, and with all with a common aim, which is increasing tree cover and biodiversity in the county.